Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another Sports Weekly. I'm John Hoffman, and we'll go right to it like we always do. We'll give you a trivia question. Uh, we've used baseball, hockey, basketball. We're going to go to boxing. First time ever in boxing, and you can probably guess what the question is going to be already. The phone should probably already be ringing. Uh, Evander Holyfield reclaimed the heavyweight championship the other night against uh, Mr. Bow. Only two other fighters have reclaimed the heavyweight championship title. Name the two fighters. 581-9061. This is ice cream. Everybody out there should be calling in. We're trying to give things away. We've got some tickets and uh, other things that we can give away. Uh, we've got some tickets to uh, the Bruins uh, Old Timers versus the Lynn Fire Department, plus our other gifts. So uh, we've got a lot to give away. So get those calls in. And remember, we have the Gary's Verka rule. If you're watching this on Wednesday, you can still call in even though we're taped. So call in Tuesday or Wednesday and get into uh, our silver bowl here. We've got some highlights and you might and we might say some low lights too but we're going to show you both right now <laughs> Manny Glow with Lintech and St. Mary's looking for the Tremont Street title this is Darren Malloy going downfield for first down to the Tech 18 yard line on the opening drive they started at their own 21 now faced with a fourth and 10 St. Mary's Lewis looking to throw the football keeps it now rolls to his right he's going to run into not only Jonathan Brown but the other Ed Lewis and they turn him aside after 17 plays Field position was all St. Mary's in the first half due to defensive plays like this. Nichols right there. Ted Nichols disrupts the play. The ball goes to the ground. Joe Farini recovers for the Spartans. The fumble recovery gave him the ball at the 39. Darren Malloy will look to capitalize. The Spartans look to get on the board. Again, it'll be Malloy taking the handoff, this time off the right side. Banks forward keeps his legs driving as he gets down to the Tech 18 yard line. The Tech defense, as it did all night, stiffens up and turns them aside. Jason Barker right here is going to get in and get the quarterback sack with help from Brian Sancranti. And then on the fourth down on the next play, it'll be the defense coming up strong again from the shotgun. Lewis looks downfield. The ball actually slips out of his hand a little bit. Jonathan Brown, the only receiver in the, in the area, picks it off for the interception. St. Mary's is turned aside and with 0-0 at halftime. Signing the second half, the defense does it again. This is Derek Swanson with a tackle behind the line. At this point, Tech had no first downs. And then this, the one play that decides the football game. Hennessy off the left side, gets by one man. Malloy, the last man, can't knock him out of bounds. He goes tight ropes down the sidelines. 75 yards for the touchdown. 6-0 Tech with 8.40 left in the third period. It was a game of inches for the Spartans in the second half. A couple of fourth down plays. This is Lewis. They needed, he went, actually went forward. They didn't give him much forward progress. And you see the stake. Lynn Tech celebrating. They held him on the first. Now, again, they need a yard. Lewis again with the keep. He bangs forward, falls down with the football. Again, they're going to come up short as they bring the stakes out. And again, Lintech is going to celebrate. The Spartans will get one more crack to try and get on the scoreboard and get, pull the game out of the fire. Lewis lets it fly downfield. Jonathan Brown will come up with a second interception with a nice return here. That seals the win for Lintech. They go to 5-2. and two. St. Mary's goes to 4-4. Four and four. Moving to Bertram Field on Saturday, it's Lynn English visiting the Salem Witches. The Bulldogs' first possession, their fine tailback. Alfonso Prada gets the handoff from quarterback Chris Conley. Fields his way along for nine yards. On a third and four, he picks up the first down to the Salem 43. On a third down try, Seth Witten will make the hit on Prada this time. Witten, who had 13 tackles in the day, brings Prada shot up the 50-yard line. English has to punt it away. Tommy Giotti comes right back with the screen pass to the right side to Fabiano. He gets two good blocks along the way. He coasts into the end zone from 37 yards away. Salem is on the board first after Stellato adds the extra point. 7-0. On their second possession after another English punt, Coach Kenny Perron will dig into his bag of tricks. Tommy Giotti, the quarterback, will look out to his left. Laterals to Cooper, who looks downfield and finds Manuel De Pena all by himself. The 30-yard play puts the Witches on top, 13-0. Salem makes it three touchdowns on three possessions as Giotti again goes to the screen pass again to the right side to Fabiano. And you're going to see a big block coming up right there by Eli Munkholm. And that paves the way for Fabiano to go 67 yards for the score. The two-point conversion as Salem tries for two. It'll be Tony Cooper taking the handoff. He goes off a big hole off the right side. It's 21-0 Salem. It was all Salem in the first half as they score again late in the first half. 
Tommy Giotti, who threw three touchdown passes. Little play action. Looks, finds Manuel DePena breaking right around the 10-yard line. The 33-yard score makes it 27 nothing at halftime. Salem come out in the second half and on the board with their first possession. Taviano takes the pitch, goes around the left side, and the leading career touchdown scorer for Salem gets another one. He cuts it back right just beyond the 20-yard line and beats the defender into the end zone. His third touchdown, it's 35-0 after Cooper adds the two-point conversion. Joe Freeman will get in the act as from the eight-yard line, the wingback takes the handoff, bangs into the middle of the stack, bounces off and goes to the outside and easily scores. Dan Blanchett and Phil Downs add touchdowns late. 56-0 Salem over Lynn English. We go to Swampskid where it's Gloucester visiting Swampskid. Swampskid punting the punt by Mike Madden. He's going to be short of the end zone as Peter Woodfork saves it and Gloucester is pinned at their own three-yard line. They go on a 14-play, 97-yard drive, capped off by this four-yard run by Sal Tarantino. Off the left side, just gets in. It's 6-0 Gloucester. Gloucester used four different running backs. This is Carlos Cormier on a third and six from the Swampskit 42. He's going to get a 24-yard pickup before he's finally knocked down at the Swampskit 18-yard line. A few plays later, it'll be Sal Tarantino adding his second touchdown, giving Gloucester some insurance as he bangs in from nine yards away. Marshall will add the two-point conversion. It's 14-0 the Fisherman. Swampskit had some offense of their own. Mike Madden, who had 141 yards rushing, gets a big hole off the Swampskit left side. He rambles all the way down to the gloss to 34 before he's finally brought down. A pass interception, however, would turn the threat aside. The Swampskit defense was big in the second half. Here we're gonna see Matt Todd with the big sack in the backfield. It's still 14-0 Gloucester after three quarters. Madden will try to get it going again. He takes the pitch from McShay, cuts it to the outside. He's going to go 36 yards to the Gloucester, 38-yard line before he's bumped out of bounds. Unfortunately, a fumble turns this threat aside, and Swampskit, playing without DePietro and also Larry Badgett, gets shut up by the Gloucester Fisherman, 14-0 at Blockshitz Field. At Manning Bowl, Classical won the toss and deferred to their defense. That's been their strong point all year, and you're going to see that it certainly pays off for Coach Dave Dempsey and the Rams here. Calvin Johnson with the kick. Jimmy Pouts is going to get it for Beverly as he starts up the left side. Gets banged around, finally takes a hit. The ball is stripped loose, and Hector Peralta will fall on it, and Classical has it at the Beverly 28-yard line. Third and 10, the Rams are going to get on the board. Kareem Gibson coming to the left side. You see him out. Distance to secondary, gets all by himself. Jeff Walden hits him right between the two and the six. The point after touchdown is good at 7-0 the Rams. The Rams defense held Beverly to four first downs and only 70 yards of offense, and this is why Keelan Coleman with a big hit in the backfield. Roger Rosinski, the coach of Beverly, in the stands do the teacher strike, but they couldn't get it on the ground or in the air. Kareem Gibson with the first hit as they turn the screen pass aside. In the second quarter, Classical will take advantage of another break. The running back is going to be stripped to the football. Matt Larina, who was outstanding on defense, comes up with a fumble recovery at the Beverly 22. They try to get it all on first down with a pass, which was incomplete, but they come right back on the ground. Kenny Green with a huge hole, untouched. If it was tag football, he wouldn't have got him. He goes in, standing up, 13-0 the Rams. The two-point conversion, Marcos Echeverria, who's just back from a separated shoulder, gets the pitch, cuts it back inside, just gets in. It's 15-0 classical. Late in the first half, Jeff Walden is going to step back and look for his favorite receiver. He lets it fly, and you're going to see interference right there as the, the defender bumps into Calvin Johnson. Classical will have it at the Beverly 26. A couple of plays later from the 16, watch number 73 as he throws one block there and another block right there, escorting Karim Gibson into the end zone. 52 yards, six plays. It's 21-0 Classical at halftime. Classical put the defense out again to start the second half, and it pays off. Badgett goes to the air. He finds Marcos Echeverria in the green uniform. Number 10 for Classical is going to return at 31 yards down the left sideline to the Beverly 11. The Rams will capitalize a few plays later. Waldron again will take to the air. He rolls to his left, lets it fly, just gets it over the linebacker to Calvin Johnson, who just broke the plane. It's 27-0 after three quarters. An outstanding defensive effort. They shut out a, a ball club that was averaging 32 points and almost 300 yards a game rushing. Classical goes to four and four. Beverly drops to six and two. Friday afternoon.